Hey guys, welcome to session three, the third installment of the Lilac Cat. And in today's video, we will continue to add the final details and soften this kitty up and finish him up. So let's get started. All right. Now, this is probably dry enough that I can go back and add some depth putting in some darker darks in this kitty's ears. There's not a lot of darks on this cat, so where there are darks, you really need to play them up. I really need to play them up. So I'm gonna do that. Make sure my hand is dry because it's gonna be resting on this paper. Make sure there's no paint on my hand. I make that mistake <laughs> and it's not pretty. All right, so there's just some dark 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 details in the ears that give this ear some definition i'm painting on completely dry paper uh, with my simply simmons rigor and just putting in some details and then to keep everything soft i'll go back in with clear water and go over some of this just to soften some of that but not lose the darkness. I don't know why this is reading so green, but I don't really want this to have any kind of greenish hue, so I'm adding more ultramarine and burnt sienna right in there, and then this is a very dark area. Some nice curving lines too. We'll add some interest and this little section is really dark too. I'm going to go and get more moisture in my brush and have a cream consistency and just feather some of this stuff out. I'm using the side of my brush to paint in some of these shadows that are very subtle along this cat's top line of his head. Trying not to see him <laughs> making marks over here. Perfectly imperfect, right? All right, so I'm gonna go and put some dark darks in this ear area. Although this is really wet, I don't wanna, I'm gonna let it dry. Anyway, I'm going to work on punching up some of the shadows in this kitty cat, and I want to keep them very soft. I'm working with my other acoustic net brush. You can use any round, a silver black velvet size eight round would be perfect for this work. I'm punching up the shadows, like I said, and I've got a little bit more burnt sienna in my mix here uh, for this shadow. It's a little bit of a warmer shadow if you look at the reference photo and I'm carefully darkening that shadow under his cheek and face. And th this is also gonna serve a purpose to help pop out his face, I think. So I'm paying close attention to get these values right and get them as dark as they are in the reference photo. Now I did pre-moisten my paper before I did this stage, so you can see it's kind of softly merging out into the area around where I put the color. Now this is a very hard line right here. So I'm putting clear water up into it to create some interest and just soften it up. Don't want any hard edges along in here really. And I'm going to put some clear water along in here. push up into this area. Just 
just trying to keep everything really soft. I myself continue to learn as an artist and I'm continually trying to push myself to learn new things. And one of the new things that I really want to master more is being loose. So that means using a lot more water and letting go of control, which can be hard. It's hard, it's scary, but do it, it'll pay off. that dry. Down here in the reference photo there is layers and layers of cats legs down here but I'm going to add some stripes as if they're the couch they're laying on shows up down here and I'm just doing that to create more patterns to help the human eye looking at this painting kind of um, help it kind of hang together as a painting. That's the way I'm looking at it. So that's my thinking. I'm going to blot. Just um, Now I'm going to get some indigo, pretty thick on my brush, and just drop in a few hints of indigo here and there to create some interest. It's very important to try to work when the paper is at just the right amount of wetness and dryness. Not always the easiest thing, but I'm not going to toy with that too much. I'm just going to let those colors kind of run. I am going to put in some clear water in between each stripe just to maintain consistency with the style that I already did in the other stripes. So I'll just let that dry. I'll let it do its own thing. I'm at 15.08. Now I've got a round brush, and if I was painting this today, it would be my silver black velvet size eight round. <laughs> I don't think I had them yet at this point when I was painting this back in February, 2020. And you can see I'm just going in on my second glaze over some of these fur areas and I'm just darkening some of the fur textures. Using tea consistency in some places and a little bit milkier consistency where I want it darker. I'm painting on dry paper.
I think that looks really bad right now. <laughs> I'm gonna need to soften all that. So I'm painting over all this area with clear water, just to make sure that my next brush strokes are nice and soft and also to soften up what's underneath. And I'm just putting more darker value under his eye there. Trying to finalize this kitty, get in those last little special details and make sure the darker areas of his very subtle markings are darker. And I didn't want to overdo that too much on this cat because he is so subtly colored. You don't want to have any harsh, dark shadows. And that's why I especially used a lot of glazing on this cat in particular because he is, his markings are so delicate. So when you need to make delicate contours and value changes, glazing is your friend. And glazing is simply doing a thin transparent layer, letting it dry. Doing another thin transparent layer, letting it dry. Here I'm putting in a little eyebrow action. And that part is a little bit dark, so that is a good place to paint on dry paper, but then go over and just kind of dab at it with your finger. You don't want it to look pasted on. That area under his nose is pretty dark. There's some pretty dark highlights and it makes sense because there's kind of like um, a bulge where the nose is so it creates darker shadows. So pay attention to that to make sure you get those contours to make it look really nice and three-dimensional. Cheers. <laughs> Another thing, if your cat starts looking like mine looks right now, which I feel like there's a lot of jagged dry edges and it looks a little rough. Um, I don't know if I'll show it in this video or not, but you can go in with clear water after everything is perfectly dry and just kind of scrub at those areas very lightly with a soft brush and just kind of um, calm down those jagged edges if you need to. That's another reason why I like to use granulating paints because they will allow you to do that. They will stay in place, they won't stain, but they will allow you to soften them. And I'm working on the inside of the ear here and I'm going to use a little bit more burnt sienna in my mix. And I'm just adding more subtle little value gradations here. I just saw something. You can see how much warmer this color is that I'm putting down than the gray of the rest of the ear. The rest of the ear is cooler or more blue. It has more ultramarine blue in it. And this part of the ear is warmer. It has more burnt sienna. And I'm working in very delicate glazes, no thicker than milk consistency, so that I can carefully build up the values in these ears and the rest of the cat. That's kind of how I approached this whole cat. All right, and then I'm gonna darken this other ear. You see how I'm glazing another 
milk to tea consistency layer on top of that dry ear. I'm doing that to just subtly build up the values. Now I'm getting a little bit darker in there and I want this part of the ear nice and dark. Blotting at it with my finger to soften the edges. I'm just really pushing the values back, getting them darker where they need to be. And I also made sure that shadow between the two cats was dark because it helps delineate the two cats a little bit and define that lighter cat's head and face. So I did want that little line pretty dark. Now, who knows whose paw it is, and it doesn't really show up very well in the reference photo, but I thought it was cute, so I'm going to add a little paw here. I'm going to add a little bit more detail than is in the reference, and just say that's someone's paw. Isn't that cute? And then I will go in and put some more details in there after that dries. Just trying to get the main idea in. And then there's a little there's a someone's little paw um little claw there. So I want to get that in. So I'm just kind of mapping that in. And then I'm getting some of the paint out of my brush and just blending it, all this area together a little bit. Get a bit more gray on my brush. Just put in a few little fur details. In here, I don't want this to be perfectly white. There's a little something there that's part of someone's paw, so I'll just Put that in, dip in my brush, wring in my brush out so I can just kind of blend this little area. So much of watercolor painter, painting is just controlling how much water is in your brush, how much water is on your paper, how much paint is in your brush. And different combinations of each of those factors will create different effects. And it takes a lot of practice to get them right. And now there's a shadow because this cat is up against this cat. So I'm going to put that in.
And then I'm going in with clear water just to loosen up these strokes. All right, I'm gonna work on this little foot. And I use some artistic license in here on this foot. Um, I made the little pads on the paw pinker because I wanted you to see clearly that it's a foot and it's a cute little paw pad. <laughs> so I'm going to add some details to these little paws. I'm painting around each one so that I can delineate each one a little bit better. Again, I'm using my little Simply Simmons script liner brush. You can use um, any small brush with a good point on it. getting it really nice and dark. And you can see that dark water flow into those clear water channels that I just created because I wanted to keep everything soft. So I painted that clear water in first and then I allowed my dark to flow in around them so it keeps it softer. And I really wanted to punch those cute little pink paw pads out to make sure you could see them. I'm taking a little bit of artistic license here and making these paws a little lighter, especially the pink parts, just so that they stand out a little bit more because who can resist some cute paws? Certainly not me. And I'll probably go in and give them a little bit more contouring. And now I'm just gonna dry brush in here while I'm in this area. Do a little bit of blot, blot, blot. And Some clear water to kind of merge it all together so there's not too hard of lines this is fur after all you want him to look furry down here in what I assume is his tummy region it's kind of hard to tell but you got a little paw there Then there's a shadow over here that I want to be really soft and not obvious at all. So I'm gonna go in with some clear water and put some clear water in here first. And then some ultramarine blue grayed down with some burnt sienna just to gray down the shadow in here that I want. I'm gonna get this little area of fur some texture and going in with clear water now to give it a softer edge. 
And then I'll go back in along this edge and put in some more darks. And then I'm just dry brushing into this area. This part of the area of the paper is wet and this is dry on the cat so it's allowing me to get these little fur textures. And then I'll go in with some clear water and complete that shadow. And then I'll go in with some thicker consistency ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and drop it right in along that edge so that we delineate a little bit of a shadow there and then we'll carry that shadow on over under the fur of his elbow a little blending here with some clear water. And I'm just kind of going section by section and looking more closely at the details of each area, making sure that I've adequately addressed the details that would be easy to overlook because an elbow area is not as important in a painting as, say, a face, but I don't want to ignore it either. So I'm just making sure that I've given each area enough attention. Now there is a shadow of the cat along in here. So I'm just going to make a soft shadow. Just go in with some consistency. I'm just going in and putting in a little bit of texture for textures in these areas. You can use the side of your brush some too. And use the side. All right, I'm at 1501, the last little section of the third, third session of the Lilac Kitty. And I'm just going to go in and do little details now and soften things up. And you want to get that little eye really, really dark because it's closed and it could get lost because it kind of matches the nose and darkness. And I wanted to make sure that that little cute sleeping eye doesn't get lost. So I tried to get it as dark as I could. And also darken up little nose holes, pop those out. That'll really help bring a lot of focus to the face, which is what you want. And now I've got my little scrubber brush. I'm scrubbing along the edges, just softening everything up. You can use your scrubber 
in any place you want on the painting. Yet another reason to use 140 pound Arches Cold Press or something equivalent that's as good as quality because you can't scrub cheap paper, it just will not work. So I'm scrubbing these dark areas, softening them up, and I could probably scrub along here. I don't think I do, but maybe I did it some other time. But um, all these harsher edges could use a little bit of scrubbing here or there to soften them up. And as you guys know, that's often the last step that I take with paintings. I use a scrubber to soften up the edges and make everything kind of glow and be soft. So that's it. We're done with the lilac cat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I can't wait to see what you come up with. So be sure to show me on Watercolor Workshop. And I have created a playlist of this entire painting on YouTube. And that also includes the video I made about doing the background. So be sure to check that out and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye you guys.